Assalamualaikum everyone and today we are going to be talking about electrochemistry. Now the chemistry inside of batteries are called electrochemistry because they involve reactions that uh, in, involve the production or consuming of free electrons. These are called redox reactions, a topic we covered way earlier in, a, in my redox reaction video. So if you hadn't watched that video, here's a link up in the cards so you have so you can watch that video first to understand a lot of what's going on in this video now when the flow of electrons are sent through conductors it can do all sorts of work like playing the piano Now the amount of work that can be done by a battery depends on the push or pull of both reactions. This is called the electrical potential of the reaction. But we simply know it and call it as voltage. The higher the voltage, the more work it can do. There are two parts in the redox reaction, an oxidation and reduction. Now in electrochemistry, we like to think of reactions as half reactions let's first look at an alkaline battery to see more of what goes on in a battery now in here the elemental zinc mixed with manganese dioxide to form manganese 3 oxide and zinc oxide here the zinc has a zero oxidation state and it turns into plus two oxidation state because oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two if you want to know how this works then i highly recommend che checking my redox reaction video and manganese dioxide in there manganese is reduced from plus four to plus three because if you do the maths then we can determine what the oxidation states are and now here this is the half reactions balanced and the hydroxides and the water come from potassium hydroxide which is a basic solution and that's why we really call them alkaline batteries if the two re reactions were to happen in contact they would spontaneously go to a equilibrium as as a load of heat which wouldn't be really helpful that's why the excess electron builds up in the negative terminal or cathode and the positive terminal terminal or anode is where the oxidation takes place now the electrons can cross the half reactions when we connect to the anode and the cathode via conductors here 
the, the there's a zinc core and an outer manganese dioxide and they are separated by a cellulose barrier which doesn't allow the zinc and manganese dioxide to mix alkaline batteries are therefore a type of voltaic and or galvanic cell galvanic cell is a cell that is an apparatus that generates electrical energy from a redox reaction so the rea redox reaction happens first and then it takes the electrical energy from the reaction another type of galvanic cell separates all of the cathode and anode and the electrons go from the anode to the cathode and the excess mix with the solution in the half cell so for example zinc ions will mix with sulf sulfuric ions and turn into zinc sulfide and copper with excess electrons will turn into copper sulfide now we know how batteries work but before you go and uh, do whatever uh, we need to know how much energy or voltage it can generate now voltage as we know as i mentioned is really just a way of expressing the electrical potential of each half reaction it involves the difference between the demand of electrons in one half versus the tendency to lose them in the other now measurements are done in standard conditions and by convention are written as being reduced not oxidized for this reason it is known as the standard reduction potential let's consider a galvanic cell where zinc is being reduced and copper is being oxidized since the potentials are determined at standard states, copper ions will be at 25 degrees Celsius and will have a concentration of 1 molar and same goes for zinc. Or else the voltage might be a bit different than expected. Now zinc, uh, now here is the reaction as a whole. Zinc mixing with copper ions and exchanging electrons now the zinc here gets oxidized so we'll add a plus two electron on the product side and for copper ions it gets reduced so we add a plus two electrons on the reactant side all standard potentials are measured relative to hydrogen ions to hydrogen being reduced which is at 0, 0.00 voltage as a baseline so if something has say one more generates one more voltage than hydrogen being reduced then it has a voltage of plus 1.00 and if it generates 0 0.66 less voltage then the voltage will be minus 0 0.66 now the voltages here are given since copper generates 0 0.34 more than hydrogen then it is plus 0 0.34 volts now zinc it generates less volts but when we talk about reduction potentials we mostly reverse the simple for the oxidation bit so this will be at plus 0 0.76 volts instead now the electrical potential for the whole reaction is the sum so doing some simple maths we can see the standard cell potential as 1.1 volts now when volts now when a battery has a positive volt the reaction is spontaneous and if the volts are negative then the reaction is non-spontaneous and will consume energy now this is actually important because the whole purpose of a battery is to release energy so that the device can harness it not to consume the energy of the device 
But what if we don't want to power phones or anything like that? What if we want to plate an iron car bumper with chromium? This cannot be done spontaneously. So a different electrochemical reaction, electrochemical process is required to do this and that process is called electroplating. Plating, as you've probably heard before, is, is the process of coating one metal to another. Now given electric current, a redox reaction occurs and atoms of the anode is deposited to the cathode. A bar, a bar of the coating metal, this time chromium, is used as the anode and the item being plated, the iron bumper, acts as the cathode. Now the electrolytic cell, it, now this is called an electrolytic cell, which is an apparatus in which an electric current causes the redox reaction. So here we actually have an electric current beforehand and it causes the redox reaction which is generally the opposite of what happens in a galvanic cell now this this cell performs electrolysis which is the breaking down of molecules using electricity so that's all there is to it if you want more videos about math and science make sure to like Comment down below if I made any mistakes or if I missed anything or if you have any questions. And thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.